It is November 15th, 1957. The world's biggest passenger plane ever built just rose into the sky for the very first time. The next generation of commercial aircraft was on its way to the world. Just two years in prior, the famous Tupolev Design Bureau was contracted to fulfill another Soviet dream, to prove the Soviet engineers were even more genius than their American counterparts. Later, this plane would be the first one to ever take a Soviet leader to the United States and set world records that still last today in 2022. But how did they actually get this far? In 1955, Soviet flag carrier Aeroflot was in search of a new long-haul airplane to do transatlantic and transcontinental flights. At that time, the aviation industry was just on its way to be revolutionized. The challenge started and more and more piston-engine aircraft were replaced by jets and turboprops. Additionally, most of these long-haul flights had to take three or four steps each flight because the range was just not enough. To share the Soviet pride and prove Soviet ingenuity, Andrei Nikolaevich Tupolev, the founder of the famous Tupolev Design Bureau, was commissioned to design a new commercial aircraft as quickly as possible. The Soviet leadership agreed on three main requirements. First, the airplane should be able to carry 120 passengers over a range of at least 8,000 kilometers or 4,320 nautical miles without refueling with an airspeed of at least 750 kilometers an hour. This would mean for a flight from Moscow to New York it would take about 10 hours. Another task was to create a truly outstanding aircraft to demonstrate Soviet pride. To save cost and especially time, Tupolev took the design of its already existing long-range bomber, the Tupolev tu 95 b At the time, the tu 95 had already proved to be a reliable bomber. The most obvious difference between the bomber version and the commercial version was of course the fuselage, which was designed with a pressurized cabin, but also other structural and aerodynamic improvements. Just as the beer, the 114 features a low wing design with four Kuznetsov NK12 turboprop engines, each powering two sets of counter rotating propellers. With 15,000 horsepower, the NK12 is the most powerful and biggest turboprop engine ever built. This combination led to the outstanding airspeed of more than 850 km an hour. What came out was a truly unique airplane. With a wingspan of 51 meters and a length of about 54 meters, the Tupolev Tu-114 was one of the biggest airplanes of its time. From the ground it measured 15.5 meters in height. In this size it is slightly bigger than today's Boeing 767 and in wingspan and length it was just about 10 meters bigger than the Boeing 707 which came out the same time as the Tupolev Tu-114. Since we are an aviation channel, let's do a quick comparison between these two counterparts. Just as the 114, the Boeing 707 was a long haul jet introduced in 1957. The most obvious difference were the engines. While the 707 was powered by four Pratt and Whitney JT 3D turbojet engines, the 114 had four Kutz of NK12 turboprop engines. According to an internet user, the 114 traveled almost twice as fuel efficient as the Boeing 707. With 870 km an hour on the Tupolev and 885 km at the Boeing, the maximum cruise speed of these planes was almost identical. When it comes to the crew, the 707 was clearly the better aircraft. While the 114 needed a crew of five, a captain, a first officer, a navigator, a flight engineer and a radio operator, the 707 only needed a crew of three, a captain, a first officer and a flight engineer. 
In the end, it took Tupolev only two years to design, build and fly a prototype of the TU-114. On November 15, 1957, the 114 did its first successful flight in Moscow to Kosti. Just a few months prior, Alexei Tupolev, chef designer of the TU-114, won a prize at Expo 58, the 1958 World Exhibition in Brussels, Belgium. The Kubyshev aviation plant, located in the Russian province of Samara in southern Russia, manufactured 32 aircraft, out of which 31 went into commercial service. Tupolev 104 was one of the first long haul aircraft ever built in the Soviet Union. It was mainly built to fly from Moscow to faraway destinations like New York, Chabarovsk, Montreal, and Cuba. At the time, the TU 114 was used tourism in the Soviet Union also started to grow, so this aircraft was maybe perfect at its time. The market for domestic flights within the Soviet Union was also growing in the 1960s. In 1960, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev traveled to New York in the TU 114 for the very first time. As I wrote in the title, the Tupolev 114 is still today the fastest propeller-driven airplane ever built. In the early 60s, test pilots set two world records that still last today. The first record was the highest average speed while carrying a 30-ton payload over a 1000 km distance. And the second world record was about carrying a 25-ton payload over 5000 km distance. On both flights, they reached speeds of more than 870 km an hour. The Tupolev Tu-114 started commercial service in 1958. The last ever flight took place in May 1983, more than 25 years after the first flight. In the early 1970s, Aeroflot started to replace tu 114 with its even bigger and more efficient successor, the Illusion IL-62, a quad-engined wide-body aircraft that still flies today with some airlines like the North Korean flag carrier Air Koryo. Until its final retirement in 1976, the TU-114 was used both in commercial flights and also in modified variants, for example the TU-126 for military usage. The TU-126 featured a huge radar mounted on its back, similar to today's Boeing E3A airplane. In its 25 years of service, two aircraft were lost, which is according to the low number of airplanes built and the lifetime of 25 years quite bad compared to other airplanes of its time. Today, there are only three existing aircraft. One President Cruz of Privat airplane stands in Molinos Aviation Museum. The second is located in Ukraine and one remains in Ulyanovsk. Due to the age of all these three aircraft and their condition, it is quite unlikely that we'll ever see a flying TU-104 again. Thank you for watching this video till the end. It means a lot to me. It is always a lot of work to make videos just like this one for you guys. Do yourself a favor and follow this channel. You'll be always up to date when it comes to the greatest highlights and events happening in the world of aviation and see documentaries just like this one every week. See you in the next video.